Can you just elaborate on your aspirations with regard to the listings, where the primary listing will be, what the mechanics might be, and whether you're listing as a, a mining company or a mining company and a beneficiator? Hmm. Martin, it, it's, we, we started off, as you know, with one of the companies that are part of the consolidation being listed in Toronto and on the JSE. Uh, Toronto is not a natural home for a platinum producer. Uh, the natural home would be obviously our home exchange, which would be the JAC. And it will then in all likelihood be either Hong Kong or uh, the LSE. We have already had extensive discussions with Hong Kong, and that is a distinct possibility. Uh, and I guess uh, we have said we will do this within the next year. And closer to the time, we will make the decision whether it's going to be Hong Kong or London or Hong Kong and London. Now with the integration of mining and manufacturing, does it become a, a, a better proposition for shareholders and why? I, th I think it will allow the shareholders to participate in the entire value chain, so really all from mine to market. And uh, by unlocking some of the bottlenecks that you have typically had between the different steps, by putting that all in one hat and having the ITC as a catalyst in, 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 in realizing the vision that we have. I think uh, it's, it's, it's a very powerful proposition for any shareholder. The moment that bulls are roaming through Wall Street, there will not be enough platinum. And this is the kind of thing that we are focusing on. We are focusing on tomorrow and the decades to come to provide this source coming out of South Africa, which I think would be an enormous uh, source of wealth not only for the participants here, but for the country as a whole. What we are seeing here is a company with half a billion dollars of nearly four billion rand of cash. We have no debt. We have the money now sitting on our balance sheet, which will be put to work straight away to develop our resources. Restate, you know, the importance of, of, of platinum, how it touches our lives, where it touches our lives, and, and what it's likely to do in the future and why you see it as so important? Well, I think the first thing to take on board is that uh, the platinum group metals, platinum in particular, really has a, it's a dual nature. I mean, one, one is the precious metal, and so it's used in, 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 in jewelry as a store of value and so on. But most people um, don't really realize its importance in, in industrial applications, in, in the world around us, in economic growth. If you pressed them, I mean, the average person would know that underneath each motor car um, in, in most countries is an auto catalyst without which you can't take the car onto the road. And, and that auto catalyst converts the noxious, noxious fumes from the, uh, from the engines into harmless emissions into the atmosphere. Um, what perhaps people don't know is that even if you could take the catalyst off, which you can't and no one wants to, um, you wouldn't be able to run that car anyway because there'd be no fuel in the tank. Because there's no economic way to refine crude into the petroleum products on which motor cars run without the platinum catalyst prov providing a cost-effective solution. You can't make nitric acid uh, without, without platinum uh, catalysts. If you can't make nitric acid, there are a whole range of explosives used in industry which you can't make. And if you and you can't make nitrogenous fertilizers, which is you know are terribly important in agricultural production. Um, in anything where you need a catalytic application, where you need a very high temperature resistance, uh, where you need strength, the platinum group metals are essential. Something like 20% of all industrial goods your telephone, your TV, your uh, DVD player, um, somewhere either contains a, a very small quantity of uh, a platinum group metal or has been touched somewhere in the manufacturing process by the platinum group metals. I call it fairy dust. What PGM is, is the kind of thing that where every day there's a new application found. We can't have fuel cells, we can't have clean energy. We have been blessed in this country by having, yeah, eight, I think actually the number is, is, is the DMR saying is 87% of the unmined reserves. And those reserves all sit in this saucer called the Bushfield Igneous Complex. And it's upon us to make sure we unlock that value 
for the benefit of the community, all stakeholders, and as the country as a whole. If you have growth, if you have economic growth, there's going to be demand for platinum group medals. So you, you have a situation where, look, I, you know, I'm, f I'm fundamentally bullish on the platinum group medals if you take any kind of reasonable um, um, outlook, uh, very, very bullish on it. Um, but against that demand side, you have a, a constrained supply side. The challenge of depth, the challenge of the, the costs of development, the challenges of just the, the cost of production, the safety issues that go into it. So, it, you know, it's against that background that um, the platinum industry is, is very important and that we're very pleased to have the specific opportunity where we've created by bringing together the three um, separate geographical properties into one consolidated property um, that has enormous potential. What we are seeing in, in our new code that we have created here in partnership with the Bachatla and the IDC is the ability for decades to come to mine a shallow ore body with the obvious safety benefits that it has for our partners, uh, the workforce that is working with us on, uh, on, on this project. Not having to smelt, uh, how important is, is that? Now, if the process works out the way the, early, the initial tests have shown, and, and uh, as we hope it to be, being able to skip that uh, smelting step and effectively do a simple roasting process is hugely important. Smelting is a very big consumer of power. Through this joint venture with the IDC, we've agreed to explore that kind of opportunity. And the first one will be the, specifically this, the scalp process because we've actually used it um, on our concentrates already. But the products that come out of, for example, the Cal process um, will, will either be uh, in powder form in oxide, so, but very close to the platinum uh, metals, or indeed could be designed so it comes out in liquid form. And so, you know, you could put it in a, in a bottle and I take it and, and then use it in making you know, catalytic converters or in the fuel cell application. Once you have that process running, then you look for the additional opportunities. And as you know, the government and, and, and through their arm, the IDC, is very interested to see that develop. I mean, in South Africa already there is catalyst manufacturing and I, I, you know, I think the platinum goes out, it gets converting liquid, it gets brought back in the bottle, it gets taken out of Port Elizabeth to make catalysts and so on. All of that, you, I mean, you could sidestep. I, I, you know, I don't want to go too far on this because we, we haven't done that kind of study or project viability analysis. But, but yes, once you're there, starting to do this, then the other opportunities I think will come. We have several projects in the industrial complex which are set to begin full operation in the near future. Mining will be vital to achieving our goals. We shouldn't fool ourselves. Producing PDMs is not like spreading butter or cutting cheese. It is complicated. It is difficult. It takes months to extract it. And, but it's the kind of thing that when you get it right, like we are getting it right on the Western Limb right now, you have a formidable engine to use for the growth and going into our second and third mining operation.